Welcome to Real Talk. I'm Brenda Blackman. Today we look at teen safety, from danger on the highways to survival on the streets. But first we turn to the schools. It was only last year when the shootings on the campus of Virginia Tech University shocked the nation. Now those same threats have become a major issue right here at home. My Nine's Giovanna Derpik with more. God, I just want to get her. I just, I just need to see her face. Nancy Class dropped everything at her job 10 minutes away. And she just ran, trying to find her only child, Carmen, a freshman at St. Peter's College, caught in the middle of a lockdown on campus today. We have no evidence right now that there is a gunman on campus. Everybody was just panicking, calling their moms, and people were crying. And I, all I kept thinking was, oh my God, Columbine. A school spokeswoman says a suspicious handwritten note was found at the college's McDermott administration building on a wall. And that triggered the lockdown, massive police response, text message alert from the school, and eventual precautionary evacuation. There are more than 20 buildings on campus, so with cops searching each one carefully before clearing it, students were released in waves. You could see this group of students rounded up and released onto this bus. In the meantime, cell phones were a godsend for other parents like Nancy. I'm with people, I'm not by myself. Then Nancy caught a glimpse of her daughter. Oh my God, it's overwhelming. I just want to go in there and run and hug her. After a nearly five hour search, cops gave the all clear. There was no bomb, no gunman, no danger, and still no explanation of what was in the note. So whatever happened to Nancy's daughter, there you see her running into the waiting arms of her mom. You okay? Stay on the sidewalk. It's okay, baby. Okay. It's okay. You're okay. You're safe, mom. In Jersey City, Giovanna Derpik, My9 News. Joining me now is Daniel Gross, co founder and CEO of PAX, an organization working to end gun violence. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks today. for having me. First of all, what was your inspiration to start PAX? I mean, you came from a major advertising company and you decided to join or started to, decided to start an organization called PAX? Well, like a lot of people who get involved with the issue of gun violence, I come to it with a, with a personal experience, with a tragedy in my family. My younger brother, Matt Gross, uh, was actually shot in a shooting that happened on the observation deck of the Empire State Building in February of 1997. Um, he was shot in the head and obviously uh, gravely injured. He's alive, and considering what happened to him, he's doing amazingly well, but it changed his life uh, forever, and it changed the lives of all of us who love him and care about him. In my case, it changed the course of my career. What does PAC stand for? We often wonder what things stand for, but of course this is actually a word that means something else. Yeah, it means something else in another language. It means yes. peace in Latin. And, uh, you know, we figured there was, when we were starting the organization, that there was enough alphabet soup out there of things that stand for things. So um, we just uh, thought it would be great to stand for a value that we're all trying to create, which is a more uh, peaceful society. Uh, and also something short that would look good on a t-shirt wouldn't, uh, wouldn't hurt either. So tell us more about the organization and what it does to help people. We take a pretty unique approach to the issue for a national organization in that we don't get involved in the debate over politics, over the Second Amendment or anything like that. Instead, we look at gun violence as the uh, critical issue of public health and safety that it is. Eight children and teens are killed every day in our country by guns. And the reality is that there are real things that all of us can do about it to save kids' lives. So while this uh, political debate rages on, um, we look at uh, real things that everybody can do to make their homes, their families, their schools, and their communities safer. So there really is sort of a speak up campaign that hopefully changes the lives of children. Yeah, that's one of our, uh, one of our programs and that's geared towards preventing um, the kind of uh, potential violence that we saw at St. Peter's and um, that, that, that occurs too frequently in our country, school, uh, school related violence and youth violence. Um, it's based on, speak up is based on this fact that in four out of five school shootings, 81% of school shootings, the attackers tell other students about their plans beforehand, which means four out of five times there are kids walking around with the information to be able to prevent these things from turning into tragedies. But kids don't want to tell on each other. They're afraid there'll be tattletales or snitches. I mean, that's considered a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, what we found is that when you talk to kids privately, um, they realize the importance of speaking up, the value of it. Um, but you're right. They sometimes there are social concerns. They don't want to be known as the one who spoke up. Um, you know, what if they're just kidding? You hear a lot. And sometimes there are you know legitimate concerns about one's own safety. 
safety, um, you know, the, the concerns that there'll be repercussions that the people who are making the threat might come after them. So what we found was anonymity was vitally important. And as a result, we created this national hotline, the first and only one of its kind, which is 1-866-SPEAK-UP, totally anonymous uh, for kids to call to report threats of weapons. But what about tips when they're coming from minors? Are there some real privacy concerns that the police and authorities are concerned about? There are privacy concerns on everybody's part, which is a big part of the reason why um, the hotline is completely anonymous. So, you know, we don't record the name of the caller. We don't record the call in any way. Um, so, you know, we, we get around all those privacy concerns. It's a completely safe and, and private place for young people to talk about something that's uh, concerning them. And it, and, and it happens with alarming frequency. You know, we've gotten 25,000 calls to this hotline in five years. So, you know, for every Virginia Tech you hear about, um, for every terrible tragedy you hear about, you know, we've probably present, prevented hundreds if not thousands of them through this hotline. And of course, we do want to know about Matthew and how he's doing. Yeah, considering what happened to him, he's doing amazingly well. He's always been a remarkable, remarkable um, first kid and now, uh, now man. And uh, he continues to prove that. You know, if you were sitting here having a conversation with him, you'd probably never imagine something as uh, terrible uh, happened to him as, as did happen. But, you know, it's, he's also um, got some struggles. It's, he's living with a traumatic brain injury and, you know, working with that kind of indomitable spirit um, and charisma that he's always had to work to overcome it. You know, sometimes it's, uh, it's harder than others and there's certainly still, you know, one, uh, two steps forward, one step back. Uh, but, you know, we, we like to focus on those two steps forward and he's still making them. And he loves music. Yeah, he's and shares he's always it with everyone. He shares it with everyone. He uh, he was in a band uh, called the Bush Pilots when when he was uh, when he was shot. The lead uh, guitarist of the band, my brother, was the lead singer. Uh, the lead guitarist, Christopher Burmeister, was killed in the same tragedy where my brother was shot. And um, and you know they were it was one of those stories. They were just you know really you know making it and playing big clubs in New York City and and around New Jersey. And um, you know the the tragedy kind of robbed them of all of that. Um, but he still loves playing playing music, and we actually just had um, a big event on February 23rd, this past February 23rd, which was the 10-year uh, anniversary of the founding of PAX and the 11-year anniversary of the tragedy when he played in front of a big audience at a club in New York for the first time, and uh, you know, with a couple of the guys from Fountains of Wayne, a New Jersey band, and uh, it was uh, it was really a special night, and um, he he really uh, seemed to get a lot out of it, which is very important. Okay, thank you so much for joining us, thank and, you, and thank you for starting PACS. Thank you. Next, saving our children behind the wheel. When Real Talk continues, stay tuned.